to Football Unknown. Welcome to a new episode of Football Unknown Podcast. Today we have Deanna Martin. Nice to meet you guys. We we've been talking for for a minute now, but you know, I think you you, were, you guys were busy with the NCAA um, playoffs. Yeah, it ended like uh, three weeks ago. We lost in PKs to UCLA, and they ended up winning the whole thing. Like I think they won two days ago. So wow, we ended two up days ago. Tying the team that uh, ended up winning the whole tournament. Wow, so it's pretty we're good. We're gonna thing. we're gonna dive into that soon. Yeah. But before we dive into that, like just give everyone like a brief intro about you and like your background and where you're from. So um, I was born in Connecticut, but my family moved down to Texas, like El Paso, Texas, when I was younger. And I went to school in Juarez, Mexico. So oh. I was in school that was like for most of my life. And um, I kind of like ba- like bounced between that. And then I moved to Miami when I was 16. And that's where my family is now. And then uh, came to UCF in 2018. Wow. So, so you spent what? part or most of your childhood in Mexico? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Like m- Spanish was like my first language. Um, wow. And yeah. So uh, coming to the U.S. was awesome. Like obviously my, my family's American, yeah. um, but um, definitely like have like my heart in Mexico for sure. Wow. So you were born here. Yeah. And then you moved to Mexico like when you were a child. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like two years old and uh, went to school there and all that stuff. And then um, was in Texas, like El Paso, Texas, and then moved to um, like Boca Raton, like mm-hmm. where my grandma's from. Yeah, yeah. And then came up here for UCF. So how was it, you know, growing up in Mexico? It was really cool. I mean, for me, like, I look at those days and they were like some of the, like, the happiest times of my life. I mean, when those ages are usually always the best, but, you know, like I, I haven't been back there um, since we left. And like, I miss like the food, you know, obviously like friends and stuff, like all those memories. And yeah, it was, it was really awesome. I, I didn't think of anything different because it was like my earliest memories. I was like two years old. So, yeah. so there wasn't like I was like here in the U.S. and then like had that experience where I could like know the difference. It was more of just like being there and then coming here and then that being like the new experience. for me, Wow. You know? So like how was how was the culture in Mexico compared to the culture up here? Um, I would say maybe schooling wise, um, the culture there was like open if mm-hmm. that makes sense okay. like i just i mean like the memories that i have i mean they're they're like a long time ago but mm-hmm. i just remember like the schooling system we like had a lot more freedom like we were able to do a lot of things and like people everybody kind of knew each other like where i was as well so it was like kind of like that small town vibe and and um yeah no those were those were the days and and, and you said you know spanish fluently is yeah right? yeah yeah i do wow and then and we all know like Mex- like soccer is always a big thing in mexico right i know yeah i was so devastated with the world cup i mean that was oh that hurt so me. so you were you were rooting for mexico yeah i mean mexico and the u.s i i go for both but oh, i mean of course man, yeah. of course like mexico like uh because i mean they're like that's the that's where like i really was like introduced in soccer like that mm-hmm. culture like my first coaches and like all that stuff like only being in that environment, so like yep. that's kind of like what I was used to growing up. Yeah, so like you know, Me- Mexico has like a place in your heart. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I know. So when was the first time like you realized you fell in love with soccer, or when were you introduced to soccer? Um, I was introduced to soccer, funny because I wanted to be like my older brother. Like when I was younger, like he's only two years older than me, but I wanted to copy everything that he did. Mm-hmm. And I remember, I think my earliest memory of like soccer is being with my dad and like he t- him taking me to one of my brother's practices and like during recess and stuff we'd always play soccer in, in school mm-hmm. like in Mexico like that's what you would do like that would be like the sport like you would play I remember just like watching him and I remember asking my dad like please can you like can I like give give this a try like I want to try this so bad but wow. just because I wanted to copy my brother but yep. and then after that my next memory is like just like these wide cones and like having to dribble through them Okay. And it being like so hard, but I was, I don't know, I was like six, but I remember being like, I'm going to do this. Like, I, I love this. I remember like being like, yes, like this is what I want to do. And then I was, I was so young, but I was like, I think I'm good at this. Cause I'd be play like small sided. I remember like the mini goals. Cause I'm a, I used to be a coach like a couple years ago, actually, no, like last year for like little kids. Okay. So I remember those days for me too, like the small goals and like everybody's just going crazy. And I remember like scoring like a bunch of goals when I was younger and I was like, wait, like, I think I'm actually good at this. Like wow. I'm fast. Like I'm, yep. I, when I was playing with boys and I was like, I'm fast and like I'm scoring much goals. Like, I think I love this. Like my, like my parents would always be proud. Like it was something like I'd get to like show off and do. So wow. I think that's when I like really wanted to go for it. And like, I don't know. I just always felt like it was something that I could use to like express like myself, if that makes sense. Okay. And wh- when did you start to play for like an organized team? I what started, 
playing for like an organized team. Oh, my phone fell. Um, <laughs> I started to play for an organized team when I was eight or nine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think like eight or nine is when like we actually like went to an organized team and it was called Team Mexico. Okay. And we were like so good. Like we were like we all were, girls. Yes, all girls, all girls. And we were so good. Like we were like beating every other team. And like we had like little rivalries in the city. Dang. Like I remember like that whole time. Like we were it, like we were so good. And um, I remember those times because I was like, like those were the di like those are like the years where you really like you look back on it now when things are tough and like you go through injuries or stuff like that. You mm -hmm. look back on those times and you're like, like that's when. Like that's when I loved it. Like those are like those days that you look back and I'm like, wait, this is really like who I am in some way. You know yeah, what I mean? Okay. Yep. Yep. And so like I look back on those days whenever like I'm like struggling and stuff, and I just remember like all the passion that like I had and knowing that that's still inside of me because yep. like that's where it kind of was built. So yeah, so that's when I started like an organized team, all girls, and we were so good. I remember all the championships that we won. Like all the medals are like still in some they're like some in some storage room now but they yeah. used to be like my prized possession and i used wow. to be like wow like this is what i love and and i don't know so I, I i look back on those days a lot and um yeah that's when i started organized team and then i went to play with boys um for like about three years after that just to just because like uh the development was better like the they way the way they played was more physical like mm -hmm. the speed of play was faster and stuff like that so my dad he threw me into boys teams and stuff until I was around like 14. So for like five years, I only played with boys and stuff. And I really feel like wow. that ended up like really helping me um, in the long run because it makes you think a lot quicker. It makes you like way more physical, like getting into tackles and stuff like that. So um, so yeah, I played with boys for like a long time, like my brother's teams and stuff. Wow. And um, and that was really cool. And then I, w I went back to playing with girls when, yeah, when I was like 14, like ECNL and all that. Mm -hmm. And um, I enjoyed that. Like, I was always the kid that I had to fly out. So, like, there was no ECNL team that was in my city. So, I had to play, like, in, in Dallas. So, I had to, like, fly out to Dallas just for games. Wow. And, like, my dad would, like, like would take me. And, like, so we would do that. And then Phoenix. So, I had I was in two different teams. And, like, so I'd fly out to Dallas or, like, fly out to Phoenix and wow. play. Wait, wait. Was that even legal? Two <laughs> different teams? No, no. It was two different years. Oh, two different years. <laughs> two different years. Okay. Two different years, sorry. So I was in two different years. So like first couple years I was in Dallas and then like my last year before coming to Miami, I was in Phoenix. So like mm -hmm. we would fly out and, and, and play there. And like that was kind of like a rough period of soccer for me because I never trained with the team. I would just fly out and play with them. So okay. it was weird because I had like this weird disconnect because wow. I would train with boys, like this the boys team that I would always train with growing mm -hmm. up. And then I would fly out on the weekend to play with uh, like the team in Dallas and stuff. Yeah. And so it was like a rough, like a tough period for me because you, you, never, you never got disconnect. to be part of the chemistry, exactly, right? Yeah. I never got to like really be part of the chemistry and like really like be a part of the team. So I just show up on the weekends and stuff like that. And, and, um, yeah, it, it, it was tough, but like, it was something that like, I know ended up making my game better because at the end of the day, like I had to just like rely on myself to get through the game or like yep. adapt to the game. You know mm -hmm, what I mean? So mm -hmm. you, you learn like to figure out what the game needs and know like what your style is and make it so no matter who you're playing with or against that it works okay. if that makes sense okay. and like that's how i started to think about it and like think about how i played soccer so it was like doesn't matter who i'm on the field with or what's going on like you could throw me in and i like i know my style and i know what i'm gonna do if that okay makes sense. yep so how was it adjusting coming from mexico playing for team mexico with all girls mm -hmm. and coming to play in the u.s um was there any difference not necessarily i don't think there was a lot of um difference and if there was it wasn't something that i noticed and mm -hmm. um maybe it, it could be like the coaching styles were different you know like i feel like team mexico when i was on that team we were just out there you know what i mean if there was barely any coaching like involved so i was never used to someone actually telling me what to do so mm -hmm. like when I came to like ECNL and stuff like that. And I had coaches like actually tell me like, this is where I want you to go on the field and like, like tactics and stuff like that. I was like, wow. Like yeah. I it was like, <laughs> I was like so thrown off because people would just like tell me to just like go out there and just run. And like mm -hmm. it would work cause I would be fine. But like, but like I, it was that next level of development of yep. like taking uh, feedback and like taking like, you know, all that stuff that coaches tell you. So I think that would be like the difference that I could um, like tell. Oh. Yeah. So and and you said you're playing with boys and you're playing with girls. Yeah. Is there any difference like, you know, playing with all girls and then playing with boys? You yeah, know? for sure. I mean, at the beginning, I was like upset because 
I loved like the the way you would obviously like connect with being like on an all girls team. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like they'd all be your best friends and stuff. And I'd be like, oh, like I don't want to come to like this like guys team, all this stuff. But I ended up um, really enjoying it because it like really made me like tough because like because also um, the guys weren't going to go easy on me. Like they didn't want to get beat by a girl. You're at that yeah. age. You know what I mean? They're mm-hmm. like, I'm not going to let this girl beat me. Mm-hmm. So you, so Absolutely. they're like, so they're like, I'm not going to let her do this. We're like not 10 years old. Like there's no way they're going to let that happen. <laughs> um, so it made me tough. Like I was like, I'm going to have to just get through this. And like, I'm going to like, it, I ended up like enjoying the practices and like really like loving being out there because mm-hmm. it was like, it was so competitive. It was so just like, the environment was so like demanding on you and the yeah. coach too like he wasn't gonna go easy on me just because i was a girl too because he was also my first coach ah. and so like he was not gonna go easy on me so like every day like it was a grind but i ended up like it, it made me i was super fit during that time because we ran a lot mm-hmm. but at the same time like i don't know it just made me like mentally very like tough i think when it comes to like yeah take like taking hits taking people saying stuff and like knowing that like you have to like raise your level, you know, okay. to play. Okay. And and you you would agree it made your overall game better. Right? Oh yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. I don't if I didn't play with boys and like be in that environment, I don't think that I would have like ended up making it as far or like taking the stri- like taking the risk that I did, you okay. know, playing soccer for sure. All right. And h- how many years did you play um, ECNL? 14, 15, 16, 17, So like four years. Four years. Yeah. Yeah. So you played there for four years. Yeah. What just are some for like, like college recruitment? College and recruitment. Like and what are some like you know good experiences you took playing for four years in ECNL? Some of the best experiences I think were the traveling trips. Like I, the one I'll never forget is when we went to like Oceanside, California, and like mm. that's when like I fell in love with California. Like we were playing and like you could kind of see like the beach on the horizon. It was really cool. Um, wow. So yeah, those are like my best memories. It's definitely like traveling with the team like all the friendships that i was able to make and like all that stuff like those are are some of the best uh times when i think about that okay and what was the next step for you after ecnl once i was committed i like i decided to just do high school for like my last term for like my senior year so Mm -hmm. like my junior and my senior year of high school when I moved to um, Boca, I decided to play in um, in high school. So after that, I was kind of just like keeping myself fit and just like having fun. What like school were, were you Boca attending? High. Boca High? Yeah. And while we were there, I, well, I mean, that class that came out of there, I mean, we crushed it. I mean, we went undefeated my junior year and went straight to like the, like the state championship. Wow. And we ended up losing against Oviedo here, which is like something I still don't live down because <laughs> some of the girls on the Oviedo team ended up committing to UCF and like they like re- remind me about it every yeah. now and then. What, what, what class were you? I'm class of 2018. 18, because yeah. I, I went to Monarch High School. And oh. and I I Boca Boca High School like you, you got your team were always good. Yeah, yeah. So it was like we it was like unfair. <laughs> yeah. How did how did you know you um UCF come to hear of you or come to know about you before they reached out or how did that whole thing happen? So my senior year of high school or no no my junior year of high school, mm-hmm. I think I got like an email or something from like Coach Tiff or some uh, at, like saying that they were interested, and I remember. Um, being like, oh, I haven't really heard that much about UCF, but like, I'm down to like go out and go to that campus and like see how it is and stuff. And I remember going on like my first visit mm-hmm. and being like, like, how have I never heard of this place before? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and I remember like talking to Coach Tiff and like, and and like meeting her for the first time and just being like, wait, like I think like this could really be the place for me, just because like I loved the environment that she was cr- like she was creating on the team you know what i mean and like mm. i hadn't i didn't i hadn't met like any of the girls that played on the team i was sold strictly by talking to her you know what i mean and like okay. the things that she was talking about because like she really is a coach that like cares about her players and and that's really rare um and so when i was able to like feel that you know vibe from her and everything like i kind of knew that um that like UCF would be like the school that I would end up choosing. Wow. And did did you have any other like offers or or it was just UCF and you just wanted to go to UCF? Yeah, like by that time, by that time it was just UCF. Just UCF. Yeah. So then you stayed and you played your high school season and then after that you went over to UCF. Yeah. How was it adjusting to that whole college atmosphere? <laughs> it was it was interesting. Like I remember 
I had it in my head that like playing in college for like all that stuff, like that level is going to be such a big jump. I need to like turn into this like training beast. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And mm -hmm. like people make fun of me now. Like they don't make fun of me. But they, yeah, they do actually. <laughs> but it's um, it's called like training mode day because the thing is like I'm so I became the opposite of like what I was trying to be. So I came into college. I remember my freshman year, like trying to be somebody like trying to be like this, like hard nose, like I'm going to not eat like it was like I won't eat brown rice kind of stuff mm -hmm. like don't give me mashed potatoes like don't give me butter like it was like it was stuff like that and like I had gone like so in my head about it because I thought that like that was what it was gonna take to like be like a great like college player like I was like okay like this is like I'm just gonna be like this I'm gonna like do all these things and go crazy about like my diet go crazy about like like my like schedule like all these things like that mm -hmm. and what ended up happening was I got injured my my freshman year during the summer, like during summer trainings. I oh, I no. think like it was, it was we were doing like these sprints, and I remember like my hip just being in like so much pain. I didn't know like what I couldn't explain the pain because I didn't know what was going on. Yeah. And like three months later of like trying to come back and like keep like something was hurting like my hamstring, like all these things started hurting on my leg. Like I ended up like tearing my labrum in oh, my no. yeah in my right hip. And I remember like after that being like. I just had like this shift and I was like, why am I like trying to like just be this kind of this athlete that I'm not, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And in a lot of ways, like me, like doing all that, like overworked me and I think is what ended up causing my injury in the first place. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so like after that, I kind of like I took this like different mentality and I was like, if I'm going to be like the athlete or soccer player or whatever that I want to become, I want to do it like being true to who I am, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. And so after that. I kind of just like dropped this training mode day thing. I <laughs> it's so funny. I dropped it and I just like I kind of just like let myself experience college and let myself experience, you know, all of the ups and downs of what yeah. comes with being like a college athlete because it is like a tough road. There is a lot of like hills to climb, a lot of um, like um, things that you don't see coming happening, you know, unfortunate events, but also like so many great things at the same time. And like, I kind of just like let myself like ride that out. And like, and so like now, I mean, I don't know, I'm just like, it's, it's so good to like be able to be a fifth year now and knowing that like most of the time that I was here that I did my best to like stick to like the athlete that I, I am and like I wanted to become. Okay. So walking in your, your first year, mm -hmm. what are some like challenges that you faced? So my first year of playing, so like so that would be my sophomore year, I think I was I was still like my hip was still bothering me a mm -hmm. lot and I was so scared that I wasn't gonna be able to be the athlete that I was before the injury. You know what I mean? Uh, like yep, do you yep. ever like get I don't know if you've you've been had an injury, but Whenever like you have an injury, you always like think I will I ever be that yeah. player again. Yep. Like will I ever be able to like do those things because it seems like I can't. Like I still feel the pain. Like every time I shoot the ball with my right foot, my it feels like my hip is like clicking. Like it's just like mm -hmm. like am I gonna ever get back to that? And like that really gets in your head because like you just don't know. And you're like yeah. I might just have to live with this pain forever, and it won't. I won't ever be as fast. I won't ever be as mobile. Mm -hmm. Like. I won't have those things that I remember the first year coming back from my injury, like those things being in my head a lot because I was still in pain and I was, and I didn't know like if I would ever, could ever be like the player I was before. Yeah, because for me, I, I broke my foot. I broke like the bone, I forgot the name of it, but the bone here and I was out for like three months. Mm -hmm. And then coming back, it was like, I was scared to really shoot the ball. I was scared to really like go into tackles because I'm out the center back. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it made me scared to, to like, do the same things I would do naturally. And I think I think like all, all athletes face that, right? Yeah, like yeah, you know, sure. they get those like injuries and then but I think I think it's a bad thing too because you can't go into tackles, go into these situations, like, you know, trying to hold back because you might end up hurting yourself exactly. in the long run. Exactly, yeah. Like it's tough because you get yourself in that like, okay, I don't I can't hold back. Like I don't want to hold back, but at the same time like I'm scared of going like all the way because yeah. like I can still feel it and what if it happens again and like mm -hmm. all these things like go through your mind and so how did you how did you overcome that? I think what what really helped me overcome that was seeing like people around me that had gone through injuries mm. and seeing them play and like 
and not be afraid. You know what I mean? Yeah, so like, I think sense. like their courage and and like watching their process like gave me a lot of like confidence to be like, you know what? Like I can, like I can come back and like I can be the player that I that I was before, or even like better. Like I was like, I think I I stopped trying to compare myself to like an, the athlete I was before, like the player I was before, and was like kind of like open myself up to kind of see the player that I could become, if that makes sense. Yeah. And, and I and I also was just like, I don't want to like leave my like my college like use up all my eligibility and use up all my college you know time um and like have any regrets you know what i mean yeah that makes sense and like i was like i want to like get through it and being like i tr i actually tried my best like i'm not i'm not like holding back and like all that stuff so i think like that shift in my like mind ended up with like ended up helping me you know yeah overcome that process okay. and like get through that and so how did, how did that season go for you but first, what position did you play? Or so you play? during that time, I was playing the nine a lot. So like center forward. Mm -hmm. Now I mainly play like on the right wing. Mm -hmm. The season was okay. Like I don't honestly remember too much about that season. I remember like there just being a lot of frustration because like in in myself because I was like I can do better than this, but I'm I'm holding back and like I just don't know like how to get like through this like I'm trying to get over this like hump like this wall like this mm -hmm. injury. Yep. And like so, all of that like was happening. So like, I think the season was okay. I think like as a team, we like underperformed like in the, in like the goals that we had set out. Um, yeah. So and, and I think that that was the case for like I think the next like two years, and then COVID came. Uh. Ah. Yeah. And that was like our well, my twenty twenty. So my junior season, and so yeah. So then that was tough, and like getting through like all that stuff. And then um, we had like two seasons back to back because of COVID. They are, were a fall season, and they kind of moved our season to the spring. So mm -hmm. we basically had a spring season and like a full fall season all in oh, one wow. year. So it was like a really packed year, and it was like, and that was tough as well. It just seemed, everything was crazy. Like it was twenty twenty. Like, <laughs> like oh my gosh, yeah. like you had so many things that were on your mind, yep. and like so many things that were like were going on, like physically, emotionally, like team dynamics wise so like mm -hmm. that was just like a time period where like there was like a lot of growth and like a lot of things to learn and and um and then came like this season and i feel like that was like everything for at least for my class like all the stuff that we had been through and like all the growth and all like the hardships and the unfortunate seasons and the seasons where we thought we just got so unlucky like this past year was like the year where like we kind of got all of our like good karma back, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. like we kind of got like all of our like revenge, like retribution for like all of the all of the stuff we had to go through. So it was like really awesome, because one thing that I was thinking about before this last season was, or one thing that motivated me a lot was like I didn't want to leave without having that like season that you could talk about with you know like yeah, five years family, later your friends yeah exactly or five years later with your teammates be like yeah remember like when we finally did it and like you know what i mean like yep. all that stuff and like i was like i want us to leave with like a season that we could really be proud of mm -hmm. in the end and i feel like this past season was one for my class at least that like we could always talk look back on and be like you know what like we're proud of like what we did and like what we finally ended up accomplishing wow yeah. and and even before that right coming to to ucf how was it like blending in with, with the other players? Because I'm sure, like, most of the players came from different countries, mm -hmm. different backgrounds. How was it adjusting to that? Um, honestly, it wasn't too hard of an adjustment because I because I had moved around a lot and been on so many different teams growing up. Like, mm -hmm. being tossed in, like, a new environment with a bunch of new people isn't something that, like, ever really... Bothered was, you? Yeah, or? bothered me or, like, was hard for me. Like, it was something that I had done so many times. So I was just, like, if anything, it's, like, exciting. Like, for me, like, staying in the same environment for, like, five years. Like, being in this, on this team, I think, is the longest I've been on a team since I was, I don't know, like, eight. And actually, yeah, no longer than that. So, like, staying is, like, the part that's, like, oh, my gosh, like, that's crazy. You guys have known me for, like, five years. Like, mm -hmm. someone knowing me for five years is, like, the longest someone <laughs> would know me my whole life. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just like so like that's the part that's like wow like like I'm getting used to like being in the same place. Mm -hmm. Um but like being thrown into like something new, adapting to like new people coming and going, like teammates leaving after 2 years, having new ones come, like all that stuff is something that's just like is so like familiar to me honestly. Okay. Now let's talk about this that that season mm -hmm. where you guys 
did something that you guys could look back on and be like, wow, we did that. Yeah. Tell me about that season. That season, like this past season, was um, it was pretty awesome. Like we had a strong schedule, like overall, and we knew like our non-conference schedule was gonna be really tough. I mean, we had like we scheduled like Texas, like UNC, like Ole Miss, and we had like strong teams that mm -hmm. we were gonna be facing, and we knew that. You know, our like our ultimate goal as a team was entering the NCAA tournament and going as far as possible in, into that tournament and okay. becoming like our becoming champions of our conference because we're going to the Big Twelve conference next year. So we wanted oh, to wow. end we wanted to end this conference in like the A in the AAC like with a bang. You know mm -hmm, what I mean? So mm -hmm. like those were our goals, like to be champions in our C, like uh, to be champions of our conference and to get into the NCAA uh, tournament. tournament. Yeah. And um, the best way to get into the, the easiest way to get into the NCAA tournament tournament without if you don't win your championship is by like winning all your non conference games like the strong ones that you play like so you play UNC like Texas like to have a, yeah. a good win that's like outside of your conference because yep. that helps you get like the at large bid but um, usually in the past we would do so great in our non conference and then we would lose or tie against teams. In our conference, no that were just that would kill our our yeah. RPI. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it was so terrible. Like it was, it's such a terrible feeling because we knew we were good enough to compete with the big teams, mm -hmm. but like we would just not be able to get it done against the teams that you're supposed to win against. Yeah. And that was kind of like the dynamic. And then so this year, we came into the year strong like usual, and then we went on this like giant tie streak. Like we just kept tying, and like there was no overtime. Uh, for for the first time, mm -hmm. so like we were just tying, and like we had, I think we like we tied like four games in a row or something wow. like that, and like it was just like, and they were all non conference, and we were like guys, like the only way we are gonna get into the NCAA tournament, and the only way that we're going to, like get anything that we want, we have to win our conference, and we hadn't done that in like four years. Wow, and also, we were just like kind of like had the wind taken out of us because we had just like tied so many like yeah, four games four in a games row and we we're row, like yeah. we're like our only option is this and so like it was tough in that sense but like i just knew that this team had it we had it in us mm -hmm. to go undefeated and that's ended up and that ended up happening you know what i mean we ended up going like undefeated for like our entire conference play wow you know what i mean like and we ended up winning the regular season and all that stuff and like and it was so great because like we kind of flipped the table. So like before we do so great non-conference and not do good conference. Mm -hmm. And I kind of was telling everybody the reason why we did so bad is because we're gonna do so good right now. Like this is when we're gonna turn it around. And I was just like hoping that that would be the case. And so I'm so proud that like we were all able to like really come together and really just like believe like because we knew we could like and every year we we had the confidence. Yeah. But I just didn't think we were seeing the results. But like as every game went by, I think our confidence was just growing. So we were winning our we won our first game on conference. We're like, okay, good. Then we just ended up winning our second one, our third one, our fourth. Wow. And we're like, wait, we're halfway through the season, halfway through our non conference, and we're undefeated. Like we could probably finish this off undefeated. Mm -hmm. And we just kept kind of going like one game at a time. Next thing you know, it was against Houston and it was our senior night and we oh. beat Houston. Was that home or away? At home. And um, someone pulls out their phone and they're like, oh, USF is USF is tying. No, USF is losing. And if USF, we and US, us and USF were like tied for like the first place. So if they were, they just lost, like we were going to be the champions, like mm -hmm. regular season champions. And um, so someone pulled out their phone. They're like, they're losing. And we're like, what? So we all like, got close together. And we're like, wait, would, would we be champions like right now if they lost? And like the answer was yes, and like we started oh, cheering. They wow. brought out the trophy and the hats and like the shirts, no and way. I was like, "Wait!" Like I had no clue. Like the thing is, before the game, we had no clue that if we won that game, we would be champions because wow. we didn't know like, yeah. what the other game would look like. And it, I don't know. We just didn't even think about that. It was senior night too, which is like such oh, like a man. big thing. Yeah, I know. So it was so awesome for like that. That was that's definitely like top experience of like college career, one hundred percent because. It was so like unexpected and it was so awesome because it was like the reward that a lot of those seniors, mm -hmm. a lot of people that are leaving like that class like truly deserved, you know, wow. on that night. So. And and you guys had all the shirts and everything ready on? Yeah, I was like, who had all the shirts yeah. and the trophy ready? Like people Dang, knew and they, they didn't came say prepared, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I'm I'm kinda I don't know if I'm like glad they didn't say something or like cause like maybe that could have gone in our heads yeah. for the game and yeah. stuff. So like I get like not saying anything about it, but like no, they were ready and they had like all this stuff and like I was like 
I could not believe it. It was it was amazing. Definitely. Man, what what are some like? So what was your family there? And yeah, my mom was there. Yeah, it was it was it was really good. It was awesome. Wow. Yeah. So earlier on, you talked about like you you um you were you took some risks, right? What are some some risks that that you you like to share that you took throughout your your whole journey? For me personally, mm -hmm. one of like the riskier moves that I took was like like I said my my freshman year was like leaving behind this like theory of like what kind of athlete I had to be you okay. know what I mean in order okay. to play so like that was like risky for me because like that was like wait like my your tr your your diet and like all those things in a lot of ways could be like your safety net as an athlete if that makes sense yeah it could be like that thing to be like okay like this is what's gonna like take me to the next level. Like this is what it is, blah, blah, blah. But I kind of just like took the risk and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna let myself be. I'm obviously, you know, you train hard and you eat, right? You do like those things as well. But at the same time, like I kind of took the pressure off myself and like that was like a big risk. Another risk that I took was trusting my coach, you know, cause <laughs> that can also be a big risk because I um, like I grew up like playing the nine. I never played the wing. And like, that'd be crazy now for people to like to believe because yeah. like, as a winger, it just makes so much more sense. And like, it's it's the way that I play feels so much more natural out there. But I only would play that the nine like I was so it was so unfamiliar to for me to play any other position. And I would and I thought it would get in my head, like all these things like that. But like, I just took the risk of like trusting my coaches, like trusting that they knew, they, they knew that what they were doing. Mm -hmm and um, not leaving because like a lot of people be like, oh, like you're not putting me in my position. Like I'm gonna leave, like I'm gonna transfer, like all this stuff, blah, 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 like all those things. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna stay here. I'm gonna like trust it. And like, cause I knew what I was capable of. And so I was like, I'm just gonna see how this works. Yeah. And, and, I'm gonna stay. and how, how was it like adjusting to that position? Cause you, you played nine all, all, all your, your life. Yeah. So what are some things that you had to like learn and get better at? Um, so I guess like the the biggest adjustment that I had to make was is actually is, is going to be funny if people listen to this, but like defending. Mm -hmm. Because like um, as a nine, like you do have to defend, but like you're, it's not like one of your, like your biggest responsibilities and more like as a nine, maybe it's more like pressure or like things like that. But like you're not like trying to necessarily win the ball because you're just like the first line of defense to like maybe sway yeah. push, push the side push the team to one way yeah. push the center backs and let them switch it stuff yep. like that yep. but as a winger you're like no your responsibility if that outside back is going back going down you need to track them you mm -hmm. need to tackle you gotta bring the ball back and like that was one thing and like and so that was one thing that i was like okay like that's one thing i'm gonna have to like make the adjustment for and so like that was just like that work rate and um that was one adjustment like the next adjustment was like simply just like you know making those runs like down the down the line yeah you know what i mean because mm -hmm. like as a nine you're making you're making different types of runs you know what i mean and like yeah. you're doing a lot more like hold up play yeah the ball gets like hit like like beamed at you or whatever you got to control to get a good first touch lay it off turn whatever all that stuff mm -hmm. but like as a winger you're more like facing up either you're running down the line or like maybe you get it on the half turn and you, and you know you're headed down that way so it was like that, like decision making. Also, like crossing. Like as of nine, you don't out, you don't really have to cross that much mm -hmm. unless you pull out wide. But, yep. but um, that was one thing that like I had to like the decision making between like okay, are you gonna cut in and shoot or are you gonna cross? Like so all just like all that stuff was like the learning curve. But it, it honestly felt like so natural because I mean I watched soccer and I you played it all your life too, so you kind of know the roles yeah. of that yep. position yep. anyway. So it's just like you doing them and like naturally i have like the attributes to be able to do it so it wasn't like physically i couldn't get it done it was just like you just had to like put yourself in that mindset to do those things yeah and and ucf man the players on the team is really good so were there like any players that you really like learned from okay so overall i think in my entire career the player that i learned the most from or like the, the player that you know i talked to the most about like soccer stuff would probably be daria Mm -hmm. like she was our six and so like and she like is just a really like s like smart soccer player like she knows a lot of like tactics tactics and stuff like that mm -hmm. so so when it came to just like learning about the game or just like expanding like your knowledge i know that like she was one of the players that i learned from the most okay but when it comes to like how i am as a player i honestly think i pulled so many things from everybody because i can think about certain things about players that inspired me to 
works. So like, for example, like Ellie, like I remember always watching her uh, play and being like, okay, like that's the work ethic that I want to have. Or like, mm -hmm. that's the way that I want to like move on the ball, blah, 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 things like that. When it comes to like some of our midfielders, I'm like, okay, tactically when I'm on the ball, this is how I want to look like, this is what I, I want it to look like stuff mm -hmm. like that. You know what I mean? Like composure, like Kristen, like I see your composure in the box. Like I want to have that kind of composure. Like I want to, I, that's like the confidence that I want to see, like see for myself on yep, the field. Yep. So I honestly think that as a player, that's how I kind of look at things. Nice. Um, and then like, obviously like communication, like Khalees, she was like the outside back that was on my side. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, that kind of communication, like that's like, like that's the kind of trust that the kind of bond that I know, like future in the future, as I continue with my soccer career is mm -hmm. the one I want to have with yep. another outside back, you know? Yeah. So like, yep. that's the kind of stuff that like I pull, like I just like pull like, certain different attributes, attributes from, from different, different players, players and yeah. be like okay like this is what i'm going to try like emulate or like this is something that like i really find this inspirational i'm gonna like want to i want to try to copy that or i want to try to like see if like if that's something that fits with me like something that i could also do you know okay and what, what what's your major like what what are you studying at, at ucf so my major so i graduated uh bfa so like in uh like a film major mm -hmm. and with wow. a minor in like entrepreneurship. Yeah. And then now um, I'm doing uh, like I'm doing like communications, like a second bachelor's, but I'm going to try to turn that into like an integrated business uh, master's. Yeah. You know, for like the rest of the time that I have here, I have about like a year left of eligibility. And so I think that's what I'm going to do with it, because like I love the business side of, you know, like film and I just I love business in general, mm -hmm. but um, it's definitely like something I want to create in the future when it comes to like, uh, like a film business or like video production, like all that stuff. Okay. And how was it, you know, balancing soccer and school at UCF? Honestly, it was, it was, um, it was tough in like, so in some places because like, especially being a film major, like you had like a lot of big projects I had to do that took like you going out and like filming and like editing, like would be a, like a long process. Mm -hmm. And, and stuff like that. So sometimes that was a little tough because we'd be traveling during the fall, but also like I had to go on shoots and I had to do so many group projects and like stuff like that. So um, sometimes that was hard, but also like it made me like a lot more like a lot more independent with my filmmaking. Cause I've always been like a very independent filmmaker, but because of like these projects, I really like took it upon myself to be a lot more creative mm -hmm. because I didn't have a lot of time. So it's like, I, I didn't have like four or five days to like do do all these shoots, you know, like to like, get it wrong. So I was like, okay, like when I do it, I have to have all this stuff organized. Yeah. I'm only gonna get one shot. I'm gonna be also be like super creative. Like I'm gonna mix in like some soccer stuff that I that I filmed, you know, like while we were on a trip, I'm gonna mix in like all these other things. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah, so like yeah. you end up like creating like a whole new style for yourself. Uh, and like, yeah. and it also makes you really unique because like it, it like it, everybody kind of has like their own kind of way that they film things and like some some sometimes no because like, things have like their film school look like that really is a thing mm -hmm. um but when you're kind of like pushed to be creative like you know you don't have as much time like you're gonna leave and so like okay i have to make this creative thing and have like my own creative statement like how yeah. am i gonna like adjust it and like how am i gonna make it my own like you really start to like see like how you can test your limits as a wow. filmmaker and yeah. i think that's what it did for me because it ended up helping me create like my own style in a way and like finding out like what I was actually passionate about, you know, cause you wow. didn't have a lot of time to like waste, kind of like experiencing yeah. a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. You're like, no, like this is actually how I want it to look. And now I know everything I need to do to make it look that way. Like I don't have a lot of time to do out this reshoot and did that reshoot. Like mm -hmm. if I'm doing this interview, I'm gonna have my questions ready. I know exactly how I want it to look. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. You know what I mean? Well, what is like one of your, your most like your favorite projects, filming projects that you had to do? I think my favorite filming project was definitely my senior um, like capstone video, which was done on like my neighborhood in Boca Raton. Cause um, the neighborhood is called Pearl City and it's like one of the oldest historical black neighborhoods in the, in the country. It's like over a hundred years old. Mm -hmm. And I decided to do it on that. So like that was like a really like feel good project for me because like it was a lot of my history and it had to do a lot with my grandma and like stuff like that. And so, yeah, so that was definitely one of, one of my favorite um, projects that I made. Wow. So give, a, give us some more about, about, about your history then. Like, so, you want, you want to share about that? Um, yeah, so Pearl City, about Pearl City or? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, Pearl City was, you know, established like 
yeah, over 100 years ago now. I think it was like in 1915. Mm -hmm. And um, it's like in the center of Boca Raton. And it was kind of given to like black people as like the land that nobody wants. You know yeah. what I mean? Like mm -hmm. so they're like, oh, like, of course, like you guys, you guys just go away, like go to this land. And it ended up being like very ironic because for the last like 50 years, they've been wanting to take it back because they're like, wait, this is prime location because yeah. it's, it's literally the middle of Boca. It's like two miles from the beach. It's mm -hmm. like just like such honestly, it's such a nice area, like yeah. as in location. Mm -hmm. And so um, in order to like kind of like split the community, they built a highway between our communities. Uh. Okay. And they were like, okay, like this will like split them up, but like no, like my community stayed so strong. And my grandma was one of the like, one of the like pioneers that really went to like the government to get it established as like a historical district. Wow. So like they also they couldn't mess with the property anymore. They they couldn't like come up to you and try to buy you out or try to like put a a Walmart or like put you know what I mean like yeah. put condos like yep. they couldn't do that anymore because it finally got established as a historical district. And I think just a couple months ago, or like last yeah or yeah, a couple months ago, it finally got like established on Google and all that stuff as a historical district. Mm -hmm. And like, so now like wow. you really can't go in there and try and to mess, mess it up. It. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it is there and it is there to stay. And it took, it took so long. I mean, my grandma was fighting for it. Like uh, for, for, yeah, for almost her whole life. So it was like wow. so great to like finally uh, see that. But yeah, no, they have been there forever. Like that is like where my grandma was born. Like, I don't know, like, and it's such a cool area because, like, the history really is deep in that one place. Like, wow. and I feel, like, so fortunate as, you know, a black person because, like, most black people don't have that, you know, like, because mm -hmm. wherever they're born or wherever they're from, like, they have no, like, history, history to run it back yeah. to that place because mm -hmm. it was either dismissed, destroyed, turned into whatever, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And no one even has the documents, burned, not even documented, <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? And so, like, to have everything, have to have that side of my history documented it like makes me like honestly so fortunate and mm -hmm. that's why like to make projects about it and make sure that that community is known makes me so happy you wow know? okay and there i know for sure like there are some things that female athletes face especially like female soccer players or, or black female soccer players so is there like anything you'd like to share that people might not see or like behind us behind the scenes that you faced or you you've known that people faced i mean i obviously know that and it's still an issue that's like um, going on today is just like how much like female athletes should be paid. Like, do they deserve to actually um, get like paid for, you know, their sport and like for being like top athletes and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. that's, that's definitely something that like as I look into like my pro career and that I like as I look into the future is something mm -hmm. that I know that like is is. Um, it's something that like a lot of female athletes are like struggling with, not only in soccer, but but just um, in general. And, and like I'm happy because it's getting a lot better. You know, yep. like people would make so many arguments about attendance and make so many arguments about merchandise, about all these things, blah, blah, blah. But I really feel like nowadays, especially in this last year in Europe, um, there is a lot of progress that's being made and a lot more respect that is given to, you know, female athletes. Mm -hmm. So I feel like really um, fortunate about, fortunate for that because I remember like, um, when you're younger, you're like, Oh, like I want to be like this professional athlete and I want this and I want that and all that stuff. And like, I've had several people tell me, Oh, like that's never going to happen. Like you're going to have to have three jobs as a professional athlete. Like you're, n you're going to be making less to a ne less than a teacher. Like it's not worth it. Blah, blah, blah. All mm -hmm. these things. Like you'll never, you'll never be able to play in a full stadium. Like that's something so many people have said to me yep. and they're like, you'll never play for a full, full stadium. No one will even care who you are. So like all this stuff. And then like, I've also heard people say that like, you know, women don't like work as hard, all these things like, mm -hmm. you know, all kinds of arguments that you yep. could say about like a athletes and stuff. And like, it just seems, um, you know, it just seems like now people are finally being educated and really having more respect yeah. for athletes because athletes and athlete, you know, male or female, yeah, you know, absolutely. you're working, just you're working hard, you're, you're training, like you're giving it your all. Absolutely. And also like, it's taking notice and it's becoming especially soccer is becoming a sport all around the world mm -hmm. that is um, really, really growing in, in like people being interested in it, people having respect for it, people coming to watch, like all yep. that stuff. So I feel like it's, I'm, I'm so like happy that I'm coming into it um, when it's 
like coming into being known like it's establishment mm -hmm. and I'm so grateful for all the like the athletes that came before that ended up make, helping it become that way because it wouldn't have happened without like all the athletes that came before that have said stuff that have worked is just as hard because I mean the athletes that are working hard now worked are, are you know the athletes has, that came before us are worked just as hard as we yeah. did now and yeah. they didn't get any of that respect they didn't get any of that recognition so you so I feel like really fortunate and and really um like I feel a lot of gratitude for like all the athletes that came yeah, before, before and like you, yeah. really really you know stood up and and made sure that like we could be in the position that we are now you yeah. know what I mean because yeah. like they in a lot of ways, they they did it for them, but they did it for did us. Did for us, yeah, because they wanted the future of, of of women's soccer to to grow. Exactly. Right. And so it's awesome to for, like I'm happy that they get to see it grow, and I'm happy to be able to like reap the benefits of like all the hard work that they've put in. You know. Mm -hmm. Okay. So so what what's the next step, the next step for you now? Like, are you still gonna be playing college soccer, or what's what's next? What do you see your future like? Um. My future, I definitely want to uh, play pro, um, and like I'm, I have my eyes set on like playing pro in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, like you know, any great opportunity is a great opportunity. I'm, I don't, I won't shut myself off to anything. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I have one more year of eligibility left, and like I'm just seeing like as far as you know, my college ex can take me, and like seeing how far like my pro career can take me at the same time so okay and i know like my overall goal is to is to be playing pro so i'll i definitely have that like in my in the back of my mind yeah and that's gonna be like what helps me like figure out my decisions you know what i mean mm -hmm. okay and is there any advice you would like to give like female athletes that are really like trying to make it to the next level or try to make it d1 or even professional my best advice for female athletes or just like athletes in general is really to stay in the moment when especially when you're playing like that's one thing this year that i really try to focus on is really just like be present like be in the moment and also like take a lot of the pressure off yourself of trying to like become all the goals that you see for yourself like kind of i'm not saying like forget about your goals but in a way like when you're playing allow yourself to just like be free in that moment allow like your training and all that stuff to like really just come out like the motivate your motivation could be the love you have for your teammates motivation could be for your coach to love mm -hmm. you can be for your family for all the people that have like helped you get to where you are now yeah and like really just focus on that and like let you like your body and like let all of that training all of the hours of hard work like speak for themselves and you'll see how over time like everything all your goals like all the things that you've wanted to start really coming to you okay well thank you so much for coming on the podcast thank it was you. a pleasure speaking to you and sharing your your, your journey and experience thank you so i much. hope to to see to see more of you in the future and i'll be looking out for to see like where, where you go and how and how you know you do in the future thank you so much so thank you for coming on the podcast it was thank a you pleasure. for having me <laughs>